Hello, mate. Hello, mate. <laughs> so, do you remember the old days of um, video games magazines? Yeah, I do. do. Great do. days when we were growing up. And one of the things that uh, I miss is the really high quality journalism that we used to get and I mean that in a in a serious way mm. there, you know there are still lots of great journalists out there but there's also this kind of democratization has meant that there's, there's a lot of fluff and mm. um, often we get a lot of the reviews and comments we get about games are you know it kind of it plays well or it doesn't play well and maybe that's what the punters are interested in but every now and again you, you find a piece and you read it and it really cuts to the heart of what you were doing or sort of what you were trying to say yeah. For the game. I remember it with DEF CON. A serious yeah. article, you mean? A uh, serious article. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Kind of kind of questioning how well you have dealt with a topic yeah. that you've picked, whatever yeah, that topic yeah. is. And and um I think we had that recently with uh this this article that Kotaku run. Yeah. By oh dear, I don't want to get his name wrong, Paolo Perdesini. <laughs> That's right, Paolo Perdesini. Paolo Perdesini. It's called what to do with prison architect, a video game about building prisons. Yeah. So, um, I mean, this article was, uh, was, uh, the Kotaku were so, uh, well, <laughs> I've never had an editor of a magazine w- warn me before an article was published before. Yeah. Have you ever yeah. had I don't that? Think, no, I haven't. And I don't think he needed to either. Yeah, the editor no. of Kotaku did write to us and say, look, just a heads up. But, um, I think it's brilliant, this thing. I don't, I don't think it's. It's a really it's, good article. It's really, really well considered. It's a serious article about prison architects. Yeah, although you know that because we are doing this thing when we're talking to it, people are going to say that, oh, they didn't like it and they responded to it and they were threatened, (laughs) you know. So you can't win. I mean, the fact that we think it's a great... (laughs) You accuse me of offending French people in our alpha videos. You just offended the entire internet. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Just just don't, don't, you know. Anyway, what do you know about Paolo? You you know some things about him, don't you? Yeah, um, I hadn't put the name together when I was reading it, but when I looked into it, I found that he did make some games that I'd played a while back. I mean, this is the guy. This is his games page. It's um, a nice page, isn't it? Yeah, these are the games that he makes. He makes very, very interesting um, um, you know, games about specific topics. I mean, this one in particular, Unmanned, I p- did play, and um, it's kind of like, um, it's a one-shot only game, but it it takes you through the life of playing a, a, a US drone pilot. And um, so you immediately start thinking like, you know, all right, Call of Duty, you know, we're going to airstrike some terrorists or something. Yeah, yeah. But actually what happens is you drive to work in the morning, you know, right, along, right. along a long empty road in Nevada or something. And you, yeah, you have a yeah. cup of tea and then you sit down at your station and, and um, it's, it's, you know, you can tell that he's got a very interesting view on how you can use games to talk about serious real world issues but still yes. have it be a game you know still yeah. have a game experience which is it. important it's very important absolutely yeah yeah if it's not a game then uh well it's not a game yeah as well i've made a film so <laughs> let's um let's have a look at his um this is article go head yeah. up to the top of this and mm. um and let's let's start uh sort of scrolling down and, and just mm. chatting about some of the issues that he, he made. i'm gonna <clears throat> prepare yourself to be held to account Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's tough, isn't it? So it's Publish a beat in the developer. It is. It's tough. So anyway, this is all nice. Scroll. You can scroll down. This is all nice. This is all. He talks about mm. DEF CON mm. and he's talking about um, uh, paid alphas and things down, mm. go down, down a little bit, a little bit. Uh, now, this is where I wanted to start um, talking to you. He, he starts talking, doesn't he, about saying that we've set the game in America. Yeah. I didn't want to set the game in America. Yeah, well, I, I didn't either. And, and, and we haven't. We haven't set the game in America, have we? Have we accidentally set the game in America? Well, it, you know, he, bright orange suit, dollars. You've used all the political language. Mm. You know, you've called them senators and things. Well, not within the release stuff. Yeah, you've just given you know, me a plot spoiler then. Mate. Well, I have, yeah. yeah. But um, I've told you about this. Well, part of the problem is that there is... There is a there's, a, there's a, there's a prison myth, right? The myth of prisons. You see it in films all the time, TV shows. You know, prisoners with their arms hanging through the bars and things like that. The mm-hmm. orange jumpsuits have become part of the prison myth, you know. This, this idea of the, the generalized idea of what prisons are actually like. But the vast majority of it is based on American prisons. I mean, British prisons are very different to American prisons in, in that we don't really have the, we don't have jail bars on our doors, for example. We have a solid door with a little slit that slides and Mm -hmm. you have one inmate in a room and things like that. And there's other things like that that make our prisons feel completely different to American prisons. But if you'd made our game look like that, then it would have been set in the UK. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It would definitely have been set in the UK, wouldn't it? And then we would have had a different set of issues, you know, because, I mean, the UK has got, 
has a whole different set of, um, you know, controversies regarding its own prisons. And we've had our fair share of nasty riots and things like that. Yeah. But for example, our race situation is completely different to America or our drug use or gangs is completely different. The kinds of weapons that you find in our prisons is, is very, very different. So I don't actually think, though, that we have picked America. It's just that America's, um, imp- America's effect on the archetype of prisons is so strong that it's very difficult to avoid. Their cultural, the sort of the, the amount of cultural output has mm. caused everyone around the world to have these these kind of touchstones exactly. with US prisons mm. that we just can't can't avoid. Well, it would be weird to avoid them, you know? It would be weird to, to, yeah. to yeah, not you, put in the, the jail bars right. and things because that's, that's in everyone's head is what a prison is like. I mean, things like Alcatraz is kind of like an archetypal prison, you know? Yeah. But it's very much an American prison. I'll tell you how we'll solve this, mate. DLC. Anyway, moving on <laughs> before you get angry with me. Um, before it ships, can we help Introversion make a not completely cursory and stupid simulation? <laughs> well, I hope we can. So let's go down. Yeah, that's, a that's the only line in, in the entire yeah, yeah, article yeah. that's a little yeah, bit it's like a bit loaded, isn't it? A bit, yeah, a little below the belt, I, I think. Yeah, a little yeah. bit below the belt. He does pull out, you know, he does pull us out here. We didn't want to pick a tough topic like prisons and just make something completely oh, cursory okay, so you... and surface level stupid. Okay. So I think he's, you know, he's using our words against us there. He is. Yeah. He is. Ah, oh, this okay. graph. Can we talk about this graph? No, because it's not really relevant to prison architecture. We haven't got a lot of time. Oh. But but look at the graph. Take it in. It's an amazing right. graph, isn't it? Yeah, it is an amazing graph. Um, so moving on. Yeah. All right then. <laughs> uh, that's that's. What's this about? No. <clears throat> well. Uh, yeah, here we his go. His first major criticism. Yeah. Is a completely legitimate one, isn't it? That. Yeah, regardless of whatever subtlety we've put into the game or not, the prisoners just fight all the time. Right? Well, this is, you see, one of, the, one of the, the issues, I mean, this is perhaps a downside of early access. You know, we get asked, what, what, what's the problems with it? Now, we haven't had time to kind of balance the game properly and mm-hmm. yeah. acquire the right level. And so, but we always plan to do that. Mm. So it's interesting. So at the moment, there are lots of bloody riots. Yeah. But that was never the intention, I think. Absolutely to... not, no, absolutely not. Well, part of it, though, is that we do things like... We do have to have fighting and riot guards and things like that. And we have to test out their mechanics and the way that they operate and the way that they work as a squad. And so, to that extent, we tend to err on the side of having fights be more common than less common. Yeah. Um, I mean, at the moment, there are several bugs in the game which make fights far more common than they should be. I mean, prisoners... Um, intelligence is a little bit lacking in subtlety and they will riot a bit too easily but they shouldn't yeah. i mean the reality is that in prisons mass fights are not that common yeah, but yeah on the other hand then you've got this other factor coming in on you which is the game factor which is that avoiding fights and securing your prison is one of the key objectives of the game yeah. and if you never saw a fight if fights were incredibly rare i mean the fights are kind of the end point of the feedback that you're doing something wrong aren't they yeah yeah exactly and we're, we're not writing prison simulator for home office decision makers yeah you know? <laughs> yeah absolutely we are we are, we are writing, writing a game yeah i think that he's got a very valid point um but i think that it's all it's destined to change quite a lot yeah um it's just you know video games are really good at fights it's the easiest place place to start with you know combat mechanics like the vast majority of conventional games are just about fighting um, yeah because the yeah. Game, game simulation is so easy to do that the underlying AI that goes into a person that decides whether they're unhappy today and they're having a low mood and then they don't get enough food for dinner and then a guard trips them up and they get really angry and start a fight. That stuff is significantly harder to do and significantly harder to telegraph to the player about the fact that that happened. Well, exactly. I mean, you can have like their little prisoner mouths turning down at the corners, yeah. but <laughs> nobody would notice. Exactly. I mean, it's, it, has to, it has to work from the point of view of the player. So that's why... That when they're not angry, they're just kind of quiet and going about their thing. And then when they're getting angry, they start jumping up and down and making a lot of noise. Yeah, and it's because yeah. we have to telegraph that state to the player. Yeah. All right. Oh, what does he mention? So he mentions here some really good ideas, actually. Um, yeah. Hunger strikes, self-harm, human rights. Oh, there's some deep issues there, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Well, inspectors... Um that was definitely on the on, on the cards. Hunger strikes? No, I don't think we've ever considered no, that. No, I actually hadn't considered... Or, or self-harm. Self-harm I had. I mean, self-harm, yeah. there, there's, there's always been a plan that um, pun- uh, prisoners that have been on the receiving end of too much grief and are of a certain character type will attempt suicide. Okay. It is on the list. Um, 
But again, it's, it is one of those issues that probably it's fair to say we're slightly scared of. Right? We don't want it to be like there's a slider from zero to 100, you know, that just charges up. Yeah. <laughs> and then if it hits 100, they kill themselves because that's like a ridiculous simplification and it's going to be stupid. Yeah, um, yeah. So the desire for us to have, to have that work much better than that means that we haven't put that in the game yet. Yeah, you know? yeah. But sometimes that means that it's difficult for us to get around to these things. I don't really know what he means by human rights. You know, the whole, the whole balance in prison is human rights, isn't it? It's, it's a constant balance of, I mean, you have a, mm. arguably a right to be, to be free, you know, yeah. so the fact that you're incarcerated kind of um, knocks that back. Well, that's a really what, interesting issue in UK politics, isn't there? That um, the European Union wants all prisoners to have the right to vote. That's right. Like the, the maybe, it, maybe the UK is actually breaking the law because we deny our prisoners the right to vote in an election. Yeah. Um, and I think that is what he means. Like the, the, issue, the balance of human rights. Like have, which of your human rights do you lose when you're sent to prison? Yes. And um, which, which are you allowed to keep? And there's very, very strong opinions on that. And also, I, for example, um, like nasty barbed wire. Uh, barbed wire is uh, outlawed. It's illegal to have barbed wire around prison walls, but a lot of prisons do it anyway and pay the fines because it's such an effective uh, uh, yeah. ra- razor wire, you know, curled wire yeah, with know razor blades in. It's such an effective method of preventing someone climbing the wall and surviving. <laughs> we'll probably have lawyers writing in and telling us it is and it isn't, but anyway. So, yeah, um, moving, moving swiftly on then. Mm. Uh, I've listened to that 99% Invisible podcast and it is very good. Right, interesting. Good recommendation. Solitary, yes, it is. Solitary confinement. He says they have no structural requirement, but the measure appears to kick in automatically. Um, it would be hypocritical to not include such a widespread measure in a prison simulation, but taking it automatic and somewhat effective is a problematic choice. Well, he's just actually wrong here. It's not automatic. There is actually a policy screen in Prison Architect where you can set the punishment policy for any crime. And it can range from no punishment whatsoever to a whole day in solitary confinement, which will have a significant psychological effect on the prisoner. It, creates, it makes them very, very suppressed, um, which means that they do as they're told, but they, they're, not, um, they're not having a good experience throughout the day. Yeah. Um, at the moment, the fact they're not having a good experience throughout the day has no effect really on the game other than making them move around a bit slower and be less likely to fight. But when we eventually tackle the mythical end game, as in what happens to prisoners after they leave your prison, this will be a factor if you've kept them locked up in solitary for the whole time. Yeah. That's going to have yeah. a substantial effect on their mental state and their ability to stay out of jail. As it should do. Yeah. As it, as it should do. So, um, but I think that we didn't, we didn't show him where the, <laughs> we don't have a good tutorial that tells you where the policy screen yeah, is. So in yeah, that exactly. sense, we're and, to blame for that one. You know, I don't, journalists don't always get everything 100% right. And if they miss something key, it's probably our fault. Mm. You know, there have been high profile cases of people not even playing the games that they review, but I don't think that's the case this time. Yeah, I think he just didn't find it. It's buried in a menu, you know. So <clears throat> this next issue, this is very interesting to me because I never actually reviewed um, the list of offences that you put into the, yeah. the prison. You know, you just, you just came and said, look, we've got, we've got offences now with, with prisoners. And that's I right. never, <laughs> I never actually, oh, you, have you got it here? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, let's have a look. Uh... Let me try and remember what the hell it's called. Um, uh, biographies. Here we go. So, oh, that's not it. That's surnames. Here we go. Criminal traits. Crimes. Right. Okay, so they are okay. in here. Bribery, of the criminal damage, vandalism, violent disorder. Possession. Yeah. Possession with intent to supply. Okay. There's two big ones. Production? Uh, uh, there isn't a production one. You mean, you mean making drugs? Yeah. No, there isn't one of those. Um, you know, um, you've seen Breaking Bad, right? Yeah, I'm watching it. That's some good yeah, TV, it's, isn't it? It's good, isn't it? I'm halfway through season two. <laughs> and yeah, video, video game, indie video game piracy. Piracy, Shoplifting. <laughs> Gross and easy. All right, so we only have two. We only have two um, drugs crimes. So the problem is that there isn't a plethora of drug uh, crimes. It's, it's more that we just don't have that much. It doesn't happen yeah. that often, you know? We don't... So his point in the article, I think, is that a substantial portion of prisoners are there because of drug crimes. Yes. You know? And the, in, well, our, in our game, drug crimes are, are there. <clears throat> or more subtly than that, their, their criminal activity has, has occurred because they are drug abusers. Right. They're, yes. So, so, so they're motivate, often, motivated by drugs. That's right. So you'll have someone that's um, <clears throat> stolen a car mm. and they've stolen a car 
because well that's probably a bad example but they i don't know they shoplifted because they need some money to to support their habit yeah so so you're going to get <clears throat> pairs of, of convictions like um shoplifting and possession of cannabis or possession of, of heroin or possession of marijuana or not why do i keep sticking on marijuana <laughs> methamphetamine you know whatever it is yeah. like coming in and it, it, that's an interesting interesting point that i don't think that we've thought about yet sort of how uh drugs link to the other offenses yeah, you know? yeah well we do have some stuff that's in development but not yet in the game and um, we have a series of status effects which we've been working on for drug usage in game yeah um, so we broadly classify our drugs as uppers and downers and um rather than having specific types and then prisoners who this is not in the game yet but it isn't one of our big planned features prisoners that take drugs will um build up a requirement for those drugs they build up an addiction it's like a need it's like a base level need right like eating or sleeping yeah. and it gets yeah. stronger and stronger the more drugs they use and it will motivate them to steal narcotics from around the prison through, through the contraband system yeah. um, and if they can't yeah. steal narcotics they'll steal whatever is currently valuable weapons or tools and they'll trade them for narcotics in, a, yeah. in, a, in order to get their fix and um, the reason why we haven't released this stuff in the game yet is that we don't yet have any method to treat this. So without, right. we, without giving the player any tools to deal with it, it's a pointless simulation, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so no, sure. At the very least, we need to have kind of like a methadone drug treatment program within yeah, the game. Yeah. And again, Which in itself is, 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 is an asset that will be stolen and indeed, needs to be looked after. Indeed, exactly. Yes, absolutely. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, but treating a prisoner of his addiction will go a long way to increasing his chances yeah. of surviving outside of jail, I think. But I think, um, I think perhaps when we're doing the, the offence modelling, uh, when, we, when we look at this drugs work, we need to look at, um, look at linking offences and things. Well, indeed, so, so somebody that comes in with a series of so drug, the whole, drug offences you know, is, is much more likely to already have an addiction to drugs. Yeah, yeah, and as soon yeah. as he arrives in jail, he's going to start trying to figure out how to get more drugs. Um, that's, yeah. a, that's a whole uh, body of work that we've been that's one of the big objectives on our list um and that's probably the reason why it feels very underrepresented at the moment it's just another crime type yeah all right yeah good so moving on what have we got next uh he talks about <clears throat> yes okay so so we we've now we've always had plans for rehabilitation and treatment of prisoners right yeah it's just it's very hard it's a very difficult um thing to tackle it's difficult to conceive of a manner in which you might communicate a um a prisoner's post-launch yeah. uh behavior to to the prison warden but we had that excellent meeting didn't we what was it two weeks ago where you and i thrashed through and and i think we and, I, th I, I think, think we nailed it i think we nailed how we're going to actually yeah. do it it's what it's what i've referred to as the end game from the very start it's the process yeah. of prisoners coming up for parole and then there's a decision to be made at parole and then eventually they're released either early or on time or whatever and then you know they 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 as a result of their character type and their experiences within your jail they will either reoffend and in some senses you've failed, or they won't. Um, and it's, it's probably the hardest part of the whole game design, I think. And it's certainly the part that we've left to last to yeah, do, well, because you can't do an end game until you've got some sort of meaningful simulation of your prisoners in jail. You know? So, you know, things like the drug addiction is, an, is a factor. Things like whether you've kept them beaten down and locked up in solitary the whole time is a factor. All the decisions that you've made about them while they're in jail are going to affect that. It's such a big yeah. issue, though. It's kind of like, it's almost the, one of the, it's one of the last pieces of the, the puzzle, you know, the, to to bring the whole game together. Well, I think I, I think it's the last piece in terms of the border. You know, there's still a lot of work to be done oh, within. You mean, you mean your within the confines? The of concept the of drawing the circle around the game. That's it's, right. It's one that's the, right. It's one of the big missing things, isn't it? It is. It is, and I, and I think it's very challenging with these types of games anyway to to consider how you have a meaningful. It's incredibly challenging. End, end state. Of course, because you know? I mean, what are, what are you gonna, you know, are you, are, right. are you gonna are you gonna have fireworks going off on screen and stuff if they succeed? I mean, it, it, that's a good idea. 
<laughs> we'll have we'll have bonfire night DLC. Yeah. Obviously, we can't we can't have we can't have Fourth of July DLC because that would be too American. But we'll have we'll have Guy Fawkes night. Guy Fawkes night. And yeah. Bas- Bastille Day. Well, what we'll do is we'll have every Diwali. We'll have every celebration yeah. other than any US. Anything US specifically holiday. US. Yeah. Uh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Does that mean we're not allowed to have senators anymore? Do other countries have senators? I know. You should never have called them senators. I told, I, I've been saying this to you anyway. No other country watch, has senators? Yeah, they do. But America, again, culturally, America, well, America really does have senators. America right? has politicians as well. Does that mean we're not allowed politicians? No, you can have politicians. But what do we have? We have... Um, MPs. We have yes, members, exactly. members of we parliament. Have members of the parliament, right? And a prime minister. Mm. So... Just go and watch some Star Trek. They're they're always great at throwing political, um, you know, political hierarchies on. Yeah, all right. Like, I'll do that, mate. I'll mag- do Magister or something, something like that. <laughs> Magister Morris. Yeah, that sounds good, doesn't it? Magister Morris. Anyway, um, right. Finance. Ooh, bite, Matt Fry. Finance. Zero dearies. Yeah, yeah. Um, go on. You talk about this. He makes a very interesting point here that we. Um, Despite, we've always said that we don't want to imprint any kind of strong political views on the player, but, but we, in some ways we have through the encoding of the game mechanics. I mean, we give you, he says here, 50 to $150 a day for a prisoner. Right? That's your federal grant. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, that's not enough. And I think that's a deliberate design decision. I'll just come out and say that. Right? The federal grant is not supposed to be a luxurious, plenty of money with spare left over type yeah. grant. And so in that sense, I have forced the player to consider alternative forms of income, right? Firstly, Sorry. through raising money through the grant system, and then eventually through industry. Industry is the, the primary way to, for long-term sustainable income at your prison, right? And that is a um, politically loaded assumption. You being dive bombed there, mate. <laughs> it's a direct hit. No, it's true. I think it's true, but um, I don't. I don't plan to change this because I think that you should be the financial model. You should be under pressure from the federal grant to find other forms of income. Yeah, I um, think so. I think so too. I, I think that the the grant system uh, actually is a very important way of of giving the player a kind of macro level choice to decide which direction he wants his wants to lurch in. Yeah, absolutely, you know? absolutely. Because I think if, if all of the decisions in the game are too fine grained, there won't be enough kind of variation in play and people yeah. will be bored. So, you know, if you decide that you want to take a grant for an education grant, then that is going to sort of scope and shape the whole manner in which your your prison um, develops. Just out of interest, get your calculator out. Well, what is 160k a year? Oh, well, you see, yes, he points out here, doesn't he, how wrong our financial model is? Yeah, because yeah a, New York, right. a New York prisoner costs 160,000 a day. Well, 160,000 a day is 160 a year. Yeah, 160,000 a year is uh, in 365 days in a year is 438 dollars a day for a New York prisoner. So, so, so actually, we are a little bit out, but. Um, yeah, but with the grants and things that were that were, and it's not balanced either, is it? Well, it's not a balanced game, but also, you know, a, a day passes in twenty-four minutes in prison architects. So there are other bendings of reality. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it's possible yeah, to yeah. directly equate the financial situation of the real world with prison architect. I mean, to some extent, it's a little bit balanced, um, but it's not. You know, I mean, I, I would imagine that a New York City prisoner is more expensive than the average prisoner as well. So that's probably an overestimate for the average cost of a U.S. prisoner. To yeah. taxpayers. Um, I mean, he he also. I think you can you can see his his kind of left wing politics really coming in here. You know, now, yes, it is the case that some people have called um, called the prison industrial complex a new form of slavery. However, there is another view, which is that a lot of prisoners lack self esteem because they've never had a job mm-hmm. there. That they they don't have the confidence to. Um, uh, to kind of in themselves to, I don't know, learn how to use a computer or or learn not yeah. just. I'm not talking now about just stamping number plates, mm-hmm. you know, unskilled mm-hmm. manual labour. I'm talking about work programs that actually go forward and a, and a, attempt to skill the workplace yeah. or, or skill the prisoners, because otherwise you get institutionalisation, right? So you get people that have lived in an institution. There's been no requirement for them to work. They go into the world and it's a massive shock to the system. So I think. Um, I, I don't accept that prison labour is in is a wholly negative force mm. within prisons. And I think it's important for us 
to try and be balanced and try and reflect the different viewpoints. Right. The biggest mistake and, that we've made is that there's only one form of prison labour at the moment, which is the moment. stamping number yeah. plates. So it's, it makes it like a pure factory. But yeah. prison labour could be it could be all manner of things, and we, we certainly have made steps towards those things, yeah. uh, other forms of work that prisoners can do. But That's I mean, right. um, the prison work plan is always going to be there because it's such a wonderful combination of a method to raise funds for your prison and also a method to help reform and rehabilitate your prisoners. That's right. That's um, right. And certainly in the UK, there are plenty of programs where you can buy kind of prisoner arts and crafts. That's right. My yeah. mother, my mother actually has a painting painted by a by a prisoner really? up on her up on her wall. Yeah, well, she's she's wow. into all that kind of like helping people out in business. Yeah. So she is it she a map bought... with a uh... <laughs> that's right, that's right. <laughs> with a crosshair on one wall. I need, I need to put the, I need to put the UV on it to see what we. <laughs> yeah, what, what. secret message. Yeah. Oh dear, that's not very good. I was trying to say our nicer side, and you just ruined it. Oh, sorry, mate. Oh, oh sorry. Well. Oh well. But yeah, no. Well, I, I don't Gordon, Gordon Ramsay did that wonderful series, he did. didn't he? Where he went in and he set up a canteen, a kitchen in. Um, that's right. And he got these prisoners um, doing quite high end food and things like that, and turning it out. Yeah. It, was, it was awesome, wasn't it? Yeah, it and, fun- and, uh, and there are restaurants in prisons, aren't there? Certainly yeah. in the UK, you can go and eat in in a restaurant in a prison where the prisoners cook the food and serve you. Right now, is that slave labour? Well, anyway. Let's let's move oh, well, on. That is an interesting question. <laughs> Let, let's move on. But I don't think we want to still with, with that one right now. Keep going down. Here he is. Michael Foucault famously asked, is it surprising that prisons resemble factories, schools, barracks, hospitals, which all resemble prisons? Hmm. Well, he says he's making the point that prison architect could gain a lot of depth and replay value by implementing meaningful links to the outside world. So, for example, um, changing the laws of the place in which your prison works. This is quite sinister, this stuff. Um, I mean, he actually comes up with an incredibly sinister idea here, which is that you could have you could have unlockable, uh, you know, bureaucracy style things that your staff can work on, which effectively lobby parliament to change the laws in favor of your prison. Mm. Right, so he's you know, so he brings up some awful examples of where um, people have uh, rule, laws have been changed that guarantee more young people will be sent to prison, for example, um, or increase you know mandatory sentences for certain crimes because it's going to mean that a lot more prisoners arrive and have longer to stay in prison. You know, uh, like he mentions the kids for cash scandal and things like that. You know, this is very yeah. this is very dark stuff. I mean, if we if we put these options yeah, in the yeah. game. We're, we're treading into uh, terribly, terribly dark territory. Well, again, you know, maybe you are on one side, but maybe you're not on the other. You know, often you, you hear um, you hear prison wardens, what you do in the UK, and governors saying it's not working. You know, we need more liberal sentences and, and guidelines on drug usage are too tough because, mm. you know, we're, we're criminalising young people when we, when, we, when we shouldn't be. Yeah. So perhaps, you oh, know... Well that's, well, that's where that graph comes from, isn't it? That success, successive governments just get harder and harder on... On crime to the point well, in, where the- in, the, in the US, right? In the US, mm. you, you need to show this. I don't. I have no idea what the UK um, mm. U, UK prison po- population has done, or, or you know, France or Sweden or Germany or mm. anything like that. It's just one, and, and we're not. It's not about the US. <laughs> about prisons. <laughs> Yeah, you could say that as much as you them. like. I don't, I don't think it's. Uh, yeah, I think exactly. we're, we're always going to have that problem. I think we could Let's change. change the tagline from "Build and Manage a, a Maximum Security Prison" to "It's Not in the Fucking United States." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could change oh, the jumpsuit dear. color, couldn't we? We could change the color of their uniforms to blue, and then everyone would say, "No, it's still set in America." Because yeah, it's just you tried to hide it. Most right, American. Was... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, most American jails use use blue. Overalls. It's only like the Guantanamo Bays of the world that use orange. I mean, there's the, the orange is a relatively yeah, yeah. recent color change for American prisons. You know. Anyway, I thought they used to wear they used to wear stripes, didn't they? Stripes even um, before that. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And jeans, I think, denim. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You remember? Denim. Remember? Um, what's it called? Which I think. Escape from Alcatraz or. Um, yeah. Shawshank Redemption. They're all in blue denim, aren't they? Yeah, and I think I might have made this up, but I think that's why jeans in the fifties kind of became, um, you know, part of the counterculture. Well, because you know, prisoners want. Yeah, exactly. I'm pretty exactly. sure. I'm pretty sure you made that up just now. Yeah, I did, but it might be true. Uh, you know, you know how you see sometimes you see um, people walking around and their trousers are kind of hanging around their thighs. Yeah. With their ass showing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I heard that that was um, that was like a prison thing because uh, in prisons you're not allowed to have your belts. You see, so they walk around. You know, and that's that's now become 
part of the counterculture. That's, sort a, that's of, a possible philosophy. Yeah. You know, I can't, I, str- I really struggle to see any other reason why you'd walk around with your trousers. I want to debag them. Anyway, moving <laughs> on. I just want to walk up to them and pull them down. <laughs> Bet you wish, <laughs> wish you had a belt now, don't you? <laughs> moving on. Should we, should we bring it back to um, yeah, sorry, Kotaku sorry. And, yeah. and Prison Architect? Yeah. yeah. So he's talking about mods, isn't he? Yeah. Um, well, what's, he, what's he, he talking about? Is he, saying he makes a valid point that if we invest in a good modding system, then we'll, we'll, be, we'll reap the benefit in the future by, you know, potentially fully fledged other games and extending the life cycle of the product. Yeah. And, and I, think he has, I think he has a very valid point. I mean, modding stuff is brand new for us. We, we only really put mod support in a couple of alphas ago. We put Steam mod support in one alpha ago, and it's going to continue developing along with the rest of it. Yeah. yeah of course it is. Just to finish, though, look at this. More so than simply playing games, making and hacking games is a great way to investigate the world around us. It forces us to compare the digital models of our games with the mental models in our heads. Isn't that brilliant? Doesn't that sum up absolutely in one word what we're trying to do with Prison yeah, Architect? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's very interesting that uh, the first conversations we had about Prison Architect and about what a rich possible topic it could be if we were, if we were able to go all the way on a, a number of these issues there would just be basically no end to the amount of controversial and interesting rich topics that we could mine for the game. You know, what at first felt like it would just be a hotel, per- hotel building simulation turned into a really, really interesting topic. Paolo, we salute you. Right, here we go. So what you do is you just, you can only, there's only two controls, right? You can just press right yeah, and you yeah. can press space to do shit. Yeah, right. You Jesus that. Oh, I don't think, oh, you didn't walk on water. No, I, I have to think, I have to keep press space pressed, I think. Okay, wait. Right, jump. Who are these guys? <laughs> there you go, there you go. There they like, What's that? Yeah, here we go. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Uh. <laughs> That's fucking brilliant, man. It That's fucking brilliant. Three years. Three years <laughs> yeah, of developing yeah. Prison Architect. We could have just done one of these. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>